Okay, all right. I'm sorry. There was just some screen sharing issue. All right. Looking at the larger picture in the rule of three, now it is essential for a forex trader, for that matter, a trader in any market to it, to plan and take trades within the context of the higher term time frames. As they always say, the trend's your friend. And ideally, you should scan through the currency pair that you're looking at or any financial instrument for that matter for multiple time frames, depending on whatever time frame you are comfortable with, whatever you're trading on the day, the four hour, one hour, whatever. Now, this generally gives you a good feel of where the currency's price may go to and any counter trend moves. So you have levels of support resistance clearly visible when you look across different time frames. Right, so it gives you a trend, a feel of the trend on different time frames. You can determine whether your trend, your, sorry, your trade is a trend trade or a counter trend trade, and then then you can manage it within this context. Now, it's very very important. This is something which I keep repeating. If you go through the previous webinars that we've here, they have been recorded. Most of them, the powerpoints are available on FX Trade. They are available on my website also. We go through the procedures on practical trading. Right? Having a trade plan is very, very important. And within a trade plan, a trade management plan is very, very important. It's never a fire and forget system. You can't take a trade and just leave it there that either it will go to the target or it will go to the stop loss level. No, you have to manage the trade. It's very, very important. The markets are ever changing. Anything can happen at any time, and to be on top of the game, literally you have to follow up the markets or follow up your trade when you are in trade and manage the trades efficiently. The simple fact is, folks, when you take a trade, it is out of your control. The markets take over, and you cannot control the outcome of the trade in any possible way. It's too, the market is too large to be controlled by anybody. But what you can control is the parameters that you have within yourself. Your management rules, your money management, your stop levels, all this comes under the garb of trade management. Thus, looking at different time frames give you a, gives you a bit of perspective and you can manage within the context of the larger picture. It's very, very important. You can't trade on one time frame in isolation because price is going to respect higher term time frames which it does a lot of times and you actually will not know what hit you where. This is a business where you are in a business of probabilities and it's better to keep all the odds in your favor as far as possible. And so looking at the larger picture but there is always always a dilemma for this. Now, which time frame, time frame is suitable for the correct analysis? Different time frames tend to give different trends, which of course lead to confusion. Now, if you look at one chart on a five minute time frame, it probably would give you an uptrend, but the same currency pair or the same financial instrument on a one hour time frame would probably give a different trend. This five minute move could be a retracement or a pullback within a larger trend. So it does become confusing as to what time frames to trade on. Now, this is where the rule of three, this is my thumb rule of the rule of three, something which I have been trading for a very, very long time. It has helped me, and I do hope it's helped you. I've just put it down what I follow. Put it down as rules over here so that it will benefit anybody who wants to be a good trader, to be very frankly. Right? Now, these have been built specifically for the MetaTrader platform. I use the MetaTrader. It's one of the most widely traded platforms. It has a lot of excellent features. But the same concept can be used on any trading platform. It's just not necessarily for MetaTrader. Let me just tell you. So the concepts that we are going to go over, if you're trading on a different time frame, on a different platform, sorry, you can apply the same thing. Now, the available time frames in the MetaTrader are these ones, the 1 minute, 5 minutes, 15, 30, 1 hour, 4 hour, daily, weekly, and monthly. That, that's what the standard MetaTrader time frames are available. Now, we need to select the ideal time frames. We should ideally select multiple time frames which do not give the same picture. Right? For example, the 15 minutes and the 30 minutes, if you look at both these time frames on any one currency or any financial instrument, it generally would show similar price movements, similar trends. We do not want that. We want a gap. We want different time frames which will give us different pictures. So your job as a trader is to correlate these things and put it down into perspective. 
So what we do is within the time frames of the meta trader, we eliminate this 30 minute time frame. Use the other time frames, the other time frames do fit within our parameters. So here it is, the one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, four hour daily, weekly, monthly. You know, here what I've done from practical experience is I've generally used a multiplication factor of four. The multiplication factor of four will give you different perspectives across different time frames. So one into four is ideally four minutes. We use the five minutes. And the only, I would say, non-fitting parameter here is the 15 minutes because five into four is 20 minutes. But of course, we do not have a 20 minute time frame. The toss up was between using a 15 minute or a 30 minute. But selected the 15 minutes because the next one available is the one hour. So 15, 4 is perfectly 1 hour. 1 into 4 is the 4 hours. Now 4 hours into 4 actually is a 16 hours and we have a daily of 24 hours, which is not too wide a difference, it's just about matches. Again, daily into 4 days is almost a week. Your week into 4 weeks is a month. So the multiplication factor of 4 kind of fits perfectly within all these time frames. So they become ideal. Everything give you a different perspective. Now, ideally, the rule of three says that you should look at three different time frames with different perspectives. You cannot look at the trend on three different time frames. You have to look at levels of support resistance. You have to look at trends. Maybe you can look at trend lines, Fibonacci levels, whatever. But the correct larger picture is when you look at different time frames for different perspectives. It helps in understanding the larger context of the picture. Let's define the first thing. Let's define the holding time frame. Now, this often becomes a matter of confusion for a lot of traders. The holding time frame is a time frame that you are trading on, the time frame that you have identified the setup conditions. Now, we'll be having a look at one example of a trade which is just taken on on the USD JPY on the one hour time frame. So we looked at the divergence here. So when I'm talking about the divergence, you could trade on any time frame. And you could be trading on the five minutes, you could be trading on the daily. But the holding time frame is very necessarily defined as the time frame that you're looking for your trading setup. You may look for a crossover of the moving average for all you uh, crossover of the MACD signal lines. You can look at pivot levels, whatever, but let's say that whatever time frame that you are looking at, that becomes your holding time frame. It's very important to identify and define the holding time frame. Now, once that is defined, then let's get on to the rule of three. This is the crux of this entire presentation. This is the important part. This is the rule of three. What we do is we identify the setup conditions of the technique on the holding time frame, whatever time frame we are trading on. The next higher time frame, as per the meta trader that we just looked at, should be used to look for support resistance levels. Then the second higher time frame should be used to look at the trend, to identify the trend. Now, this is the rule of three, which I have been using for a very long time, something which I teach, something which my traders follow, and it works very, very well, because this combination of the correct time frames and the correct all the different factors that you're looking at give you an excellent picture of the overall price action. Now, putting it down to the perspective into the meta trader, let's say that if you're trading on the one hour time frame, that means you're looking at the setup conditions of your technique, your strategy on this particular time frame. Then the rule of three applying would be your one hour becomes your holding time frame. You look at the next one on the meta trader, which is your four hour. You determine levels of support resistance on the four hour. And you look on the daily to identify the trend, to look at the trend. Okay. Now, let's get one thing clear over here, or just before we go ahead. Similarly, the other time frames, just as examples, should be used along similar lines. So if you're trading on the five minutes, your 15 minutes becomes your support resistance levels for to look for support resistance levels. The one hour should be used to look at the trend. Similarly, if you're trading on the daily time frame, you should look on the weekly for support resistance levels, future or higher support resistance levels, and monthly to identify the trend. Now, let's just look at the trend. 
let's say that you're trading on the daily time frame just for as, as an example you look at the weekly to determine levels of support resistance and let's say you're looking for a long trade for whatever let's say I'm looking at a crossover of a moving average right on a daily time frame I see that the 13 moving average has crossed the 34 moving average which is a standard configuration so I go long based on that I will probably look at the weekly time frame to look at where the expected levels of support resistance are I'm going long and if I look at the monthly and I see that the trend on the monthly is down do I not take the trade now this becomes a very important question because everybody says of course that the trend is your friend you shouldn't go against the trend but I would disagree over here in one perspective is your trade plan once you have a trade plan it says that your setup conditions are fulfilled for whatever your setup conditions are you must take the trade because if you're going to wait for 10 different factors to come together you'll probably just be sitting over there and not take a trade remember you are in a business of probabilities which I always say and once you have the odds in your favor you must take the trade now here if you are against the main trend on the higher term time frame your trade plan changes I would probably try and take profits of the trade as soon as possible as soon as price reaches certain in this case resistance levels we are looking for trades on the long side I would probably take profits off shift my stops and protect my profits and my capital if I was within the context of the larger term train let the trend trade ride for a longer time but even if it's against the main trend it doesn't stop you necessarily from taking the trade this was a very important point which I keep getting questions about this and I thought it was worth clarifying over here and let's have a look at some important points over here one is your trading parameters have to be applied on the holding time frame so if one hour is your holding time frame your entry for the trade your stop levels your target levels have to be determined on the one hour you cannot go to a higher term time frame to do that similarly if you're looking for a break of a key level entries are also based on break of trend lines break of support resistance levels so if you're looking for a break of a Fibonacci level of a break of a trend line then you should look for a close of the one hour candle above or below these levels whatever the case may be you cannot if one hour is your holding time frame you cannot say that I'm looking for a close of the of this particular trend line only then I would take the trade no your holding time frame is your one hour your parameters have to be applied on that particular holding time frame uh, point is you can go down one time frame then your holding time frame just to get a clearer picture of price action using the same example if the one hour is your holding time frame you can go down what's the next lower time frame on the meta trader that we looked at the chart that ladder that we looked at you can go down 15 minutes to look at the proper points to plot your in lines to plot your Fibonacci levels maybe to plot your pivot levels to identify the key fractal bars the swing points whatever but once again your trading parameter will be determined only on the holding time frame you must not wait for a close of the 15 minute candle above a trend line or a pivot level or any key level to get into a trade it has to be the close of the one hour bar depending on indicators you may choose to use appropriate indicators now this is something we covered in the earlier session while using the best possible use of indicators appropriate indicators for different situations if I was using the same indicator across all three different time frames it doesn't serve any purpose you have to use the correct indicator uh, let's go over the trade example over here okay uh, Raymond I'll, let me just give you my PayPal ID okay uh, please send about uh, say how much about half a million Swiss dollars into my PayPal bank account and then I'll have a look at this <laughs> just kidding uh, we will have a look at the cable on the four hour daily weekly definitely Raymond and we, we I'll let you know about that <laughs> okay all right let, let's go over the chart this is one trade that we 
just had a look at or this is something that we just not I didn't trade it is one of my students or one of the traders took this trade I did not trade it but it's an excellent example a perspective about multiple time frames right looking at the USD JPY where is my annotation tool just give me one moment now, what we were looking for is just give me a moment. Where is the annotation? Oops. Ah. As soon as price found support over here, it started moving up. We were looking for some targets towards the upside. Now, what was the reason for uh, looking at this move towards the upside? What is the reason for it? Um, Right. What we had a look at here was a divergence. You can see that price has made a kind of a double bottom over here and your stochastics gave high, higher highs. This is a classical bullish divergence. This, in fact, is a bullish divergence class B. It's not a class A. Okay, Ahmed, we'll come back to that. So this is a class B divergence and a divergence is one of the most effective trading techniques that I have used, I still use it, very, very effective. So we were looking for movements for price towards the upside. And once we started looking for moves towards the upside, let's have a look at how we use the different time frames over here. Right. The first thing is, if I'm looking at, this is the one hour, I looked at the one hour. The first thing is, we look at the Next higher term time frame for your levels of support resistance. And mind it, we are at a stage where we have not yet taken the trade. We are looking to go long. So we go ahead to the four hours. On the four hours, let me just zoom it inside. On the four hours, we had levels of support resistance. I could identify a very strong level over here. Uh, this is something my meta trader has shifted. Okay, just give me a moment. Right? We identified a very strong level of support. So price bounced off a level of support now. Levels of support resistance, ideally a practical tip, is any level which turns from support to resistance is always very good level. So this was a resistance into support. So this was a good level. So longs were justified here because price bounced off a support level. As far as looking for targets towards the upside, this has been on an uptrend for a very long time. There is no previous high. So I do not have a previous level of resistance. So the only level of resistance that I can look for is that price may come to the high. Right? So we were looking at levels of support resistance. Now we shift over on this now let us first get over this. Now we shift over to the daily time frame. You can see that the trend is definitely, definitely towards the upside. So it's a long trend. And if we get a long trade remaining in the direction of the longer term trend makes a lot of sense. It, it kind of, the, what I say is, it puts the wind in your sails. The trade tends to go further and further. So this was an excellent trade as far as the rule of three was concerned. Let's touch upon one more point about the indicators. On the bar, I'm using the stochastics over here. I generally use only the stochastics mainly to determine the divergence. And as you can see over here, the stochastics, because of the way they are built, because of the way they are calculated, they give excellent indications of oversold overbought levels, which in turn give excellent indications of divergence. It gives better divergence subs then the MACD, the RSI, it is just from my personal experience. So I use the stochastics and as you can see over here, there was an excellent divergence. When I'm looking for levels of support resistance on the 4R, there are no indicators. I don't need indicators. I'm looking at price action. I'm looking at levels of support resistance in the price action. If I use the indicator, I'll only tend to confuse the matter a little more. Why do you, I need indicator? I don't need indicator. Any indicator over here. On the daily time frame, though the trend is clearly visible over here, there are two things to look at the trend that you can effectively use. The MACD is an excellent indicator to determine your longer term trends only because of the histograms. The MACD histograms have got some excellent qualities. And as you can see over here, there does not seem to be 
any loss of momentum. Price is going on the high, it's making high, your histograms are making higher highs. So the trend or your momentum, underlying momentum is still very, very strong. There does not look to be any chance of a reversal or even a pullback at this stage. So if you're trading on the USD JPY, it's advisable to remain long because your longer term trend is definitely, the momentum is definitely, underlying momentum is very, very strong. The other indicator that you can use on a longer term time frame is a moving average. Now, believe me, the moving average, I consider the moving average to be one of the most lagging indicators. But if you look for it to identify trends or even levels of support resistance, it's an excellent indicator. You have to get the correct fit on a daily time frame. You need the correct number to it or the correct setting to it. But I prefer the MACD. So this is based on this situation. Right? Okay, now let's do one thing. As Raymond said, let's have a look at Raymond was asking on the daily, right? Uh, daily weekly. Four hour daily weekly. All right. And uh, Emmett, coming down to that, my time frames that I use are the ones which Raymond described. I generally trade on the four hours, looking at the daily and weekly. Maybe on the one hour, but not lower than that. I prefer higher term time frames. So let's have a look at the GBP. Let's remove everything over here. Okay. GBP, four hours. Okay, now what I'm looking for is a possible setup. See, it starts with, is there a particular trade? Is there a particular setup over here? Now, what it can be is we had or there was a possible divergence over here. If you look at this, price had made a low, low, low. Your stochastics, though, not really. This was a class C divergence, not a very good divergence. But for the time being, let's assume that we are lost. Price has moved towards the long side. You can look for levels of support resistance even on this particular time frame. So simple fact is you have a previous low. Price has broken a previous low. So your underlying momentum here has shifted. Now let's look at the daily time frame. Right? We go to the next time frame. We shift this. Let's remove this. We are looking for levels of support resistance. Oops, GVP and daily time frame. On the GVP, I'm just looking for levels of support resistance over here. I can see a good level of support resistance somewhere over here. As I said, any level which turns from support to resistance becomes an excellent level. So we have a support which has turned into resistance. Now, one of the first targets, if price moves up, will be this one. So this gives you a target in a way. Let's see if we can get some levels of support resistance towards the doubt side because if price is moving down, we need to look at certain levels of support resistance towards the downside. Right? We are not looking for anything else on this time frame except levels of support resistance. We have probably a level of support resistance, maybe a strong support somewhere over here, which is waived. Now, what this is giving me that if price is moving up, I can use this as a target, the upper level, 1 point, was that 58.30? It's a possible level. If price still moves down, then it is expected to carry on till 1.55. And you can see if you can stretch this over here, it is a pretty strong level of support resistance. All right, so this this becomes your levels of support resistance. Now, we're going to have a look at the weekly. Your trend on the weekly. The trend on the weekly is a little flat over here if you go to see because see you can see the price action definitely but it's more of a histogram. The reason why I use the MACD, your histograms are pretty flat. They are very close to your zero line. You don't have large histograms. So your trend on the longer term time frame is kind of trendless if you can look at that and obviously I mean, price is kind of range bound over here. So either way, it could do good. But for the time being, definitely what you're looking for is this move towards the downside. So you're looking at a strong downtrend. Now, what does this give us on the four hours? On the four hours, if I'm looking for price to move towards the upside, right? 
I would rather use the same time frame. Let, let's just get the 4 hour one over here, 1.5850, sorry, the daily one. So 1.5850, I have an expected target at 5850, right? Based on the 4 hours, I have a level of support resistance over here. Now, here you can refine your trades, saying that price momentum on the 1 hour seems to be bullish. You can go ahead, plot your trend lines over here. You have a close so far. This 1 hour bar is not yet completed. But if this 1 hour bar gives you a close above this trend line, your underlying momentum is certainly towards the upside. You can then plan your trades knowing that this is your target. You can keep your stops below this particular low. Entry conditions can be determined with everybody. Uh, I'm sorry, with different factors. Here, what you do is as soon as price reaches this particular level, because you are against the main trend on the weekly, your main trend is towards the downside, you would tend to take profits. All right. Well, I hope that is clear. And just wanted to say, any, any other questions? I think I, I do hope this helps you identify the time frames and use it in the correct perspective. If you want this uh, PowerPoint, you can go to my website, the London School of Financial Trading, and it will be available on the London School of Financial Trading. You can register over there. I can send you the PowerPoint once you register there or you ask for on that website. So the London School of Financial Trading is specifically for providing practical education like this. Right? We have a lot of courses, we have workshops, etc., etc. Anyway, so that is about it. Uh, AUDCH of Sylvester, I don't think we really have the time for that. And to be quite frank, honestly, this is more of a theoretical class. If you can look at it, I want you to understand this. The GVP USD was an excellent example. Good. Uh, Yamashita, yes, uh, I find. See, the first parameter of the stochastic, the 5 that you're looking for, it doesn't really matter whether it's 5, it could be 9, it's not very important. It's the, the last two factors of the stochastic, the 3 and 3. The 3 and 3, if you use it in that setting, it gives a lot of whipsaws. And they are ideal for larger term time frames. See, the lesser is your setting on an indicator, the better it works on larger term time frames because larger time frames you need to compress the price movement if you want, or look for quick reactions in the price movement. Right? I find the 5.5 to be ideal to determine divergence, and I use the same 9.5 across all time frames. It's just a very personal thing, but all of my traders follow the 9.55. If you're looking for divergence on the stochastic, not just oversold, overbought situations, I would recommend using the 9.55. Uh, yes, Walky, I do trade counter trend. And uh, same question which uh, Emma, which you missed, that if your shorter time frame are in conflict, and if you have a trade set up on your shorter term time frame, you should follow that because see, you are trading on a shorter term time frame, right? Your setup conditions are fulfilled as per your trade plan. Now your longer term time frame may not agree with this, but you're looking at a very long term time frame which may not impact your trade immediately. But yes, to remain in that, your trade plan has to differ. You can trade counter trend provided your trade management is fine. Okay, Yamashita, on the 4 hour also, it's an excellent thing. Uh, again, once again, clarification what do you use it for on the 4 hours? If you're looking at it on the 4 hours, are you looking for also low about levels or are you looking for something else? Only if you're using it to identify the divergence, I would recommend the setting of 955. For anything else, then it also low about levels, it really doesn't matter whatever you use. All right. All right, folks, I think that was it. I hope this was practical enough, helps you in your trading. Uh, bullish pip stop loss levels of support resistance are ideal 
for using stop losses looking at this example on the USD GP, GBP USD if we are going long over here I would place the stop below these particular lows you, you can see that there is a strong level of support which has not been broken just below that is ideal so levels of support resistance are the ideal places to keep stop losses All right, you're welcome all of you. It's always great to talk to you. And once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to get back. This is my email. Anytime you can visit the website, register on the website, I'll always be available. There you go. Oh, there you go. All right, so I'll see you folks next week. Till the time you have a good trading week. Have a great weekend. As always, I'm here for the questions. Let me know anytime you need anything. I'm here for another five minutes. If you have any questions or anything, you can just let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you folks next week. Uh, yes, bullish pips, I do use trading stops, but trading stops in the direction of the trade, not against the direction of the trade. The trade management, my trading stops are a very important part of the trade management. It's always wiser to lock in profits as soon as price gives you some kind of profits, and for that the trading stops are excellent. Uh, like it generally at times of major economic news I stay away from trading at least I don't open new trades on an existing trade if it's well within my favor I would probably move up towards break even lock in a little bit more profits in case there are some whipsaws I don't want to get caught out if there is an existing trade which is very close to the stop loss level I would probably close it off so major economic news for general economic news we keep an eye on it but I do not trade the news releases and I believe the positive creates the levels or better levels of support resistance so we wait for the news to settle down for the markets to settle down look at further levels of support resistance Fibonacci levels and then take the trade from there All right. Oh, you're welcome. All right, folks. So I'll see you again next week. And till then, have a good trading week. Have lots of pips in your trading week. That's goodbye from here.